Baby, let your hair down And let's stay on the couch And put your head on my chest And don't make a sound We can turn off the phone Forget about the world Is there any one damn thing in it That compares to you, girl? I've seen a California sunset I've seen the hills in Tennessee I've seen the beaches down the border I've seen the Georgia heaven green I've seen the blue sky in Kentucky I've seen the Colorado Springs But none of those things are pretty as you Girl, I can't stand it Let's move this upstairs Let me take these two hands And run them through your hair All these things I want to do Are running through my head Leave your dress in the hall Here the sheets off the bed I've seen the California sunset I've seen the hills of Tennessee I've seen the beaches down the border I've seen Georgia every day. I've seen a blue sky in Kentucky. I've seen Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you know me. your hair down and let's stay on the couch and put your head on my chest and don't make a sound we can turn off the phone forget about the world is there any one damn thing in it that compares to you girl I've seen the California sunset I've seen the hills in Tennessee I've seen the beaches down the border. I've seen the Georgia heaven green. I've seen a blue sky in Kentucky. I've seen the Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you. Girl, I can't stand it. Let's move this upstairs. Let me take these two hands and run them through your hair. All these things I want to do are running through my head. Leave your dress in the hall, rip the sheets off the bed. I've seen the California sunset, I've seen the hills of Tennessee, I've seen the beaches down in Florida, I've seen the Georgia every day. I've seen a blue sky in Kentucky I've seen the Colorado Springs But none of those things Are pretty as you know me anything I've seen a California sunset I've seen the hills in Tennessee 
seen beaches and floor. I've seen Georgia every day. I've seen a blue sky can touch. I've seen Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you. Girl, none of those things are pretty as you. Let your hair down and let's stay on the couch and put your head on my chest and don't make a sound we can turn off the phone forget about the world is there any one damn thing in it that compares to you girl i've seen a california sunset i've seen the hills in tennessee I seen the beaches down in Florida. I seen the Georgia heaven green. I seen a blue sky in Kentucky. I seen Colorado Springs. But none of those things are pretty as you. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to the Fret Job. The Fret Job is a show where we talk about the bones of the guitar world and talk about pretty much anything with strings. The Fret Job is broadcasted live from Frizzell Guitar at 228 Jane Trail, Danville, Kentucky, home of Kentucky's finest guitars and the Frizzell line of guitars. I'm going to hand it over to my co host, the luthier, professional luthier at Frizzell Guitars, and also the host of a new series that he's got going, a new series of videos, basically what I would consider shop talk. So uh, I'm going to hand it on over to Brandon Edwards. All right. What is up, everybody? This is Brandon Edwards. I am your host here at the Fred Job, and I am uh, also uh, your host with the Frizzell Guitars, What's on the Bench, Shop Talk, and whatnot. This is my co-host, Jonathan McCorder. He is a claim real estate agent. He is one of the greatest musicians I know, a friend, and I'm proud to co-host this with him. So next up on our agenda, we're going to be talking about the feature business of the week, and I'm going to be talking about Junction City, and I'm going to be talking about 127 Amish Store. Whether it's a sandwich for lunch or soup, or it's all your kind of Amish needs, your your local stuff, go there. 127 Amish Market, located in Junction City, right off of 127, next to Dollar General. So, and man, uh, there's... Everybody be, is going down there and getting those sandwiches at lunchtime. I, I, I do that a lot. So a lot of people do, man. Just look at it's my gut when you go. come in, and you'll see how good it is. And another thing, it's good for if we decide we're going to make like BLTs. That's where we go. We go there to get the the bacon and, and, they, the, and the tomatoes. They're good, man. They have one of the best potato soups, homemade potato soups there is. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So. uh what about this topic today? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Uh so so this topic is uh is great, but uh before this topic gets on here, um well, actually, I'll save that for later. We're going to Okay. We'll just we'll just uh dive into the uh dive into the topic here. Yeah, today's topic is basically about 
you know, when do you quit getting, when do you stop getting what you pay for in guitars? What's the relationship to price and quality and how does brand play into that? So uh, that's kind of what we came up with for the week. And you can talk a lot about this. Um, there is a point, I feel like, when you stop getting what you pay for and you start paying for, for brand name, but it depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're buying from a collector's point of view or if you're buying from a player's point of view. Yeah, for sure. So uh, uh, we're talking about that. So one thing there before we go on with uh, with with the topic here, I want to put on the screen here for everybody to see. This was sent in by a viewer, and oh, uh, yeah. basically, basically, this is uh, is or wouldn't I wouldn't say is. But uh, we're going to say, basically, is this fingerboard drier than Jonathan's Pono? So, y'all look at that for me. Tell me what you think. Do you think it's drier than Jonathan's Pono? All that good stuff. Let me know. Is that a crack I see? Yes, that is a crack. It's definitely drier than my Pono bridge. Because so, I got there before the crack on mine. And they have waited just a little longer than I did. Okay, so yeah, so that is cracked. I'm gonna say they got me beat. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think that is, uh, that is absolutely so. So I don't know whether to congratulate them or. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know what to say to them. <laughs> hats off to, hats off to you and also <laughs> by the way guys this is our 10th episode on the fret job so help us celebrate if you could maybe you know put some kind of celebration in the comments for us because this is episode number 10 and, and congratulations uh, on that fretboard <laughs> i guess congratulations you suck more than i do at taking care of your guitars but, uh, <laughs> tell them the story to you, tell buddy. them the story again for the new people that are watching well i i like bringing shiny new stuff in and <laughs> and uh bring them bringing it into the shop and and playing it and showing it to brandon and i came in um i think maybe i'd had it there once before but i brought my pono in one day just stopped by one day i love having something with me when i come by and i brought it in and brandon's playing it and he looks down at it and he's like dang man Whew, do me a favor take this thing home and put some lemon oil on it or something because well, there was uh, a little bit more to that so he had it out for a while and i kept looking real funny and had like like this constipated like i just like i said <laughs> bothered me real bad and he finally i think came out and said is everything okay and i said please man do yourself a favor lemon oil that bridge it is drier than a bone <laughs> yeah it was pretty dry but that fretboard there's worse <laughs> Thanks to the fellow that sent that in. That is yeah. drier than Jonathan's uh, Pono. So you yep. beat Jonathan. You have took the throne. <laughs> now see if somebody else can take it. So so we're going to go into today's topic here. Go ahead and discuss that with him again. Yeah, like I said a minute ago, it's uh, when do you stop getting what you pay for in an instrument? You know, At what price do you stop getting what you pay for? What's the relationship between price and quality and how does brand name play into that and believe me it does play into it i'm sure everybody knows that but uh that's what so, we're talking about so i'm gonna start off with the thing that i hear from people well i've got this guitar it's supposed to be all solid mahogany it's just like a les paul or just like da 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 there is different grades of wood so there is different grades of wood and a lot of times you'll find your guitars oh it's all this solid wood oh it's all this wood and it's like a 300 hundred dollar guitar well the grade of the wood is probably really low and crappy yeah and a lot of a lot of people like they'll say mahogany and they'll they'll use like a blanket term mahogany and sometimes they're even calling like sapele mahogany and it you know it's very similar but it's different yeah. you know it's not worth as much as the as the honduran mahogany or, or genuine mahogany yeah for sure so that's a thing that you want to i want to mention is you got to know the different point and range there is a difference of wood 
and there is higher grade wood than others. Like there's grades of wood, like 3A, like 4A. There's grades of higher wood, which make it better quality. People think it's all the same, but it's not. Wood is not just wood. There is different grades mm. of high quality wood. Where it's but you out. don't have to buy, that being said, you don't have to buy a Gibson or a Taylor or a Martin to get high grade wood. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, you don't have to buy. I mean, I've got this lag here. It's got a sapili back and sides and a sapili neck. It's got an Ovangle ridge and a snakewood fingerboard. And, I mean, this guitar here is solid as it gets. And it's all solid wood and it's great quality. I mean, and it's got an Engelman spruce top. You can find solid guitars out there. That's not a problem. Yeah. And I suggest you do. I mean, I, I suggest you try to, if you can afford to get into the to the solid wood realm i think any solid wood guitar is going to be better than a laminate you know yeah for sure i mean um even your even your run-of-the-mill your entry grade solid wood guitars are still probably going to sound better and age better than than a laminate and guitar. you guys comment too in the comment section here on facebook we want to hear your input too so please give your guys's input we thrive off of your guys's input we like to hear what you guys have to say so you guys comment and let me know what you guys have to say you guitar players out there what are your thoughts i mean here's the deal you got quality that does play a big difference in guitars obviously quality pays a great difference in guitars and in name brand you could you could find a guitar out there and there is i'll give a great example who's a great quality guitar but the brand blue ridge yeah blue ridge has got great quality but like you said the name it's not a well-known yeah, it's, it's depends on what you're it's becoming more well known in the bluegrass world it is very well known name you know there's a lot of bluegrassers that play blue ridge i've been to leslie county my wife's got family out there and now that's kind of bluegrass country uh in eastern kentucky and uh when I was out there, every time I was out there, at least somebody said something about a Blue Ridge guitar or pulled one out and played it. So it is big in the bluegrass industry, uh, but they are high quality, and and you can buy them for about half of what you would buy a comparable model of Martin yeah, for. Yeah, for sure. And I and I'm going to say this, and you guys are going to you guys are going to you guys are going to hang me for this. I'll say it again. I'm not a Martin guy. I don't care for them. I mean, I, as I love them. Acoustic guitars. I I would rather have a Gibson, or I'd rather have a I'd rather have a Blue Ridge, or on some cases, I would rather have I'd rather have like a, a Taylor. But to me, like if I all right, if I'm a guy that can't if I if I'm a guy that can't afford a D28, and a D28 starts out at about twenty five hundred bucks, that's about what they start out at. And if I'm a guy that can't afford that D28, I, I will go out, and I am that guy most of the time. I will go out and buy the Blue Ridge BR160, and basically it's the same exact guitar for half you know half the money you'll spend a, a little you'll spend probably 1200 bucks getting that br160 okay here's it's a half the for money you. it's just as good of a guitar i don't think the blue ridge is better than the martin but i don't think the martin is twice as good as the blue ridge i think they're both equal i think the blue yeah, ridge compares with it i think that the blue ridge competes with the martin in every way shape and form i think martin ain't what it used to be anymore well the only difference is to me and i've got a martin and i've had couple blue ridges the difference to me is my martin when i get it out and play it it has a more settled down tone to it that's not as bright really bright like a new guitar is and this a is, blue ridge yeah. sounds like a new guitar and a martin their spruce is older so it's a little more settled down and you guys can laugh at me for this all day every day i don't care you can say but when i look it's like always oh, playing a martin on stage when I see somebody playing a Gibson and it's got like the pearl inlay of Gibson, it's got the, you know, it's got the cool inlays in it. And it's, I think man, they're serious about what they do, you know? Yeah, but I mean, if you're playing a D45. Well, yeah, D45 is a different story. Come on now. Yeah, well, it's a Martin. Hey, uh, yeah. So does Blue Ridge have a D45 copy? 
Yeah, I had one. You sold it for well, me. Well, yeah, but now was that a D? It was a no, pre war. It was a pre war D forty five copy. BR one eighty. But it didn't. Did it have the inlays like a like a uh, D forty five? It had the inlays of a pre war D forty five. The snowflakes in the fingerboard is the pre war configuration. Do they have one that has the one that like the current D forty five? Like the hexagons. Yes. Like the G three uh, hexagons. I'm not sure if they. I, they. I think they might. But anyway. Yeah, they they make copies of about every Martin. Now they make copies of about every Gibson too. Now they make a J forty five copy. My father in law had one, slope shoulder. It was a rosewood slope shoulder J forty five. Will you send me that? I want to see that. I'm curious. Not right now, maybe, but yeah, know, yeah. sure, yeah. Send me that because I'm really, really nice. You got you got my gear turning. Send me some of the the Gibson copies. You got my gears turning. You're gonna really like them. Yeah. Yeah, because I may have to get one to try it. Try it on a Blue demo Ridge video. makes them, and Eastman makes them too now. They make them too. Well, I don't care about Eastman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no offense. I like Blue Ridge just as bad as good. If, I, if I'd rather have a, no offense, if I'd rather have a copy, I'd rather have a Blue Ridge copy than an Eastman. Yeah, I don't know about that. I've had them both. I mean, when I think of good quality copies, I think of Blue Ridge right away. I don't ever come to my mind when I think of Eastman. I That's think, because you don't know Eastman as well. I know Eastman mandolins and guitars. I played a thousand of them. Yeah, and they make all solid wood. Yeah, high I mean quality. they make great guitars. But it's a I cleaner just, build than a Blue Ridge. I just don't. I mean, I think their guitars are great. Do not get me wrong. I love them. And they they actually had the gumption to put a nitro finish on it. Oh, does Blue Ridge not do nitro? No, they do poly. Well, I mean, if they do, if they. I don't mind poly. But they do nitro. I like, nitro. I like it, but it, it's, as far as like as far as copies go, to me, I think of a blue. I think of a Blue Ridge when I think yeah. of a good quality copy. I don't yeah. think of Eastman for copy guitars. I think of Eastman as their own separate guitar company that does their own separate things. I don't. When someone says, "Oh, Eastman copy," but really, at the end of the day, they're they're still copies. Yeah, everyone is. Because, I mean, they all came from Martin, <laughs> yeah. they all came from Gibson, they yeah, all came yeah. from those staple companies. Uh, and and that, I, gets, that, that works into the topic there because, you know, you, you're paying basically in, it, what we're talking about, the Blue Ridge. You say the BR-160, say it's around 1200 bucks. We have saw them for that. And then you got 2400 bucks for the D-28. What are you paying for the brand? You're paying twelve hundred bucks for that brand. Yeah, that's what you're paying. Let me tell you something about, I'm, and I'm going to throw this out there. Fender's a good, good contestant for this. We're going to start talking about electrics. I'll go into Gibson yeah. here in a minute. So, there's there's companies out there that make that make for the lesser price identical everything to a Stratocaster. That yeah, I had one as a kid made by Harmony, and it was just well, yeah. like a Strat. Well, I'm not meaning those. I mean JC like, Penny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really meaning the harmonies. I'm meaning like yeah. actual good quality, like copies that like have good pickups in it. Good oh, electronics. Yeah. Like tons of them. There's a company that makes that makes Stratocaster copies. They sell them for like eight seventy five, or they sell them for like eight fifty, eight fifty for a Stratocaster co Strat copy made in the USA. All the same stuff, and it's like it's just great. I mean, yes, you can get a Strat for about a thousand USA Strat. But honestly, I mean, you get a, a new brand one. new one, you'll spend over a grand, won't you? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like, here's here's the thing with like Gibson too. Gibsons are expensive. Yes, they're worth it for the name, but you're paying for the name when you pay for Gibson. Yeah, if you're buying it for collectability, and the funny thing is, a lot of these Asian guitars and cheaper made or cheaper priced guitars that are not the big name brand. A lot of them later on become become very collectible too, and you mean one because they here? hit the nail on the head with Hold quality. Hold on one second here. Was that a guitar? Brandon's been.
Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, we are back. Sorry about that. So if everybody can. So we were talking about electrics. You had just, we had just gotten into you. You talked about that company that makes the Strat copies for yeah. around eight fifty. And then let's talk about like Gibson. I mean, yes, I love Gibson guitars, but you are also paying for a name on the guitar. I mean, the thing is, is what it probably costs to actually make one of those is is not is what they sell it for. But now the difference, like like we were talking about the acoustics, Blue Ridge versus Martin. The comparison it t is probably much different between like Epiphone and Gibson and Les Paul, though, right? Well, for Blue Ridge and, Mar and Martin. So you you're, you got Blue Ridge and Martin over here in the acoustics, and Blue Ridge, in my opinion, you know, material quality, build quality, it's all comparable to Martin for half the money. In the Epiphone versus Gibson, are they really as comparable? They're not, are they? No, I mean they've got some inspired by Gibson that's all solid wood. But when it comes down to it, I don't know the quality, the grade of the wood for those eight hundred. There's a bigger gap between the Epiphone yeah. and Gibson Les Paul than there is just between like, the Blue Ridge like and the, the Martin. Squire, just like Squire and Fender. It's the gap. yeah. There's a big gap. There's a big gap there. Yeah. But uh, now the gap between a Mexican Fender, made in Mexico, and the a USA Fender, there are some Mexican Strats that. I have picked up that yeah. were I felt like they were really nice guitars. Yeah, for sure, like definitely, like I agree with you on that. Like the uh, player strat. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's yeah. some there's some really incredible things out there that I agree with that I like very well. Like one thing I'll mention to you as well is the fact of the matter is I like Mexican strats and tellies. I think they're great. I played some incredible and I'll tell you something here, what I like, this is my opinion. If I'm going to have a maple neck with a maple fretboard on it, I want it to be flame. If not, I don't care too much for a maple fingerboard. I'd rather yeah. have a maple over rosewood, if, you, if that makes sense. Well, I like the feel of a maple fingerboard because they're really fast. I mean, it's just because it's got lacquer over it. That's it, or whatever. That's probably Polish. because I kind of grew up on a maple fingerboard. That Harmony Strat copy and then my Godin Electric, it had a maple fingerboard. That's probably why. So here's something I want to mention with that or with what you're talking about here is let's, uh, like, let me mention something else here to you that is really, really cool, I think, is the fact of, like, you got the different price points, the different variant range, but... I think Fender uses poly on all their finishes, except for a few custom shop things. And they used to use nitro on all their USA stuff, pretty much. Now they use polyurethane on everything. Because yeah. it's well, oh, And it's more environmental friendly. Like Gene Larravee in acoustics, he started using poly a long time ago because, A, it's easier to use, and B, it was... A lot more environmental friendly, and, and a lot I'm of people probably going to start using that. polyurethane myself, just because I'm tired of lacquer. Yeah, well, lacquer's kind of a pain, isn't it? Yes, you have to spray so many coats, and it's kind of a pain. And here's the deal: like this guy here paid paid nine grand for a guitar. Okay, so the quality, the wood was really high quality, four A quality wood. But comparable, you're paying, you're paying for the look and the name. So there was more work done. You're paying for the look of the guitar. This guy paid nine grand for a guitar, and the wood quality was exactly the same as a two grand guitar, a three grand guitar. But you paid for the look. The paint was a little bit different on it. And yes, sometimes you do pay for for various woods. Like this guy paid ten grand for a guitar, but it had some incredible crazy wood that was used. So therefore, there yeah, was a reason paying, why I paid. You're paying ten grand for a guitar. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like definitely, most definitely, for sure. Like I'll agree with you there. Is if you're paying that much for a guitar, it can be. Sky's the limit. What you can. Yeah, the sky's the limit. In ornamentation, man. I mean, it's how much are you wanting to pay for that stuff too? Because, like, w when you strip them down to the bones. It, you know, a D a D forty five and a D twenty eight. 
there's not going to be very much difference in the way that guitar plays or sounds yeah, at sure. all. I mean, it's all about bling, man, whenever you start getting up into the 40 yeah. series in like a Martin. And the same thing with Gibson. When you get into the fancier ones with all the inlays and stuff, you know, you can spend as much money as you want to on bling. I love bling, though, by the way. I'll put my hands up and say I love it. I do, too, but as i go on and collecting guitars and playing guitars it's meant less to me and less to me but now i will admit that blue ridge i yeah. had it had quite a bit of bling i like that in okay it. so let's talk about this and jonathan correct me if i'm wrong the d45 originated with gene autry the singing cowboy i'm pretty much right there is he kind of invented that they made it for him and then they kind of continue making it because people wanted one like his I think the story may go that way. I was a little more familiar with that story, but I yeah, think somebody I think it that might knows a little bit more, you can correct us on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. But that's what I'm thinking is Gene Autry, the singing cowboy. You gonna look it up real quick? I'm just gonna see uh, if it's in this book. I thought I thought it was. Yeah, but, that would be uh, super cool. Let you ever us heard know. of a Frama, You ever heard of a Framus guitar? I, I think I have. Been a while, though. Yeah, my my um, stepdad uh, had one at one time. It it had an arched back. It was an acoustic with an arched back. It, it, it was pretty cool, man. Yeah, they have arched backs on, like, uh, Taylor's, some guitars. Some Taylor's yeah. guitars don't have, don't have any binding in the back or any braces, I should say. The first time I seen a Taylor with no back braces, it really threw me for a curveball. <laughs> man have you looked in the side of one of the new uh v brace the v-class brace from taylor yes i have oh my goodness man they are so wild looking on the inside but i played one i think i told you about it it was a 700 series little 12 yeah. fret oh my goodness man it was awesome i don't think the d45's in here but i believe that's how the story went Yeah, for sure. So, but there's just not not going to be really now. Now back in the day, a D forty five had Brazilian rosewood, so it was different than a D twenty eight. But so now I had a chance to work thing. on one of the last years. They started using Brazilian rosewood on a Martin guitar, and it was pretty cool. I've got to work on some yeah incredible guitars in here. You've seen that guild, so make sure you're tuning in on YouTube to that video series, like sharing and all that good stuff. We want to see you here and yeah. uh, whatnot. But you talk about price point here. We're talking about like name quality goes up and quality goes down. How much when to stop? I mean, really, when to stop is when you feel some people. Oh, I wouldn't pay over five grand for a guitar. I just wouldn't. I just can't see myself. That's too much. That's like paying for a car. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> you sound like Gomer. <laughs> congratulations. Some people, if they have the money, they want to spend it. Okay. I mean, oh, we're spending no twenty it. grand for a fifty nine less Paul. I just think that's ridiculous. Well, cool. <laughs> I, I get it. But some people will. It's where you feel comfortable, where you cross that line and say you want to stop. That is my opinion, is where yeah. you cross that line and you want to stop. I think, like, once you get up around, it just this is just my opinion, but I think once you get up around 1500 bucks, once you get to that point and – Usually after that fifteen hundred dollar mark in an acoustic, I'm I'm speaking from an acoustic standpoint. It's probably a little different number on electric, but I think once you get past that fifteen hundred dollar point, you're either paying for brand name beyond that, or you're paying for bling. One of the two. Yeah, for sure. Because that's that's about what I spend on or wood quality. My Dep Blue Ridge or my yeah. Eastman's. If you're in a guitar that's got like like very rare. Brazilian back and sides or guitar with got very rare Honda and mahogany yeah. or something like that. That's a different story. And that's story. bling too, but it also comes with tone. I mean, the you know Brazilian rosewood. But I'll just be honest with you, I picked up a, and I love Larvie guitars. I mean, I had one. It was one of my favorite guitars I've ever had. But I picked one up one day in a store, that was Brazilian rosewood. It was thirty five hundred bucks. This was about 15 years ago. I picked it up, and me and my father-in-law both played this guitar, and neither one of us liked it, and it was Brazilian Rosewood. I mean, I have. I've had people— I thought I would love it because of yeah. that. You know. And this is this is where I say that I, 
I just don't have a taste for Martins. I played a bunch. They feel real stiff to me. And the thing that really, I used to think Martin guitar was the only guitar that mattered for, for a long time. I was, I was actually, I thought, well, if you got a Martin, you made it in the music world. I slowly learned. I played a, I played a, I think it was a D25. Is that sound right? They make it D25? No. It's, I mean, I'm not going to say they never made one, but it's not something that's common. There's D18, D28. D28, that's it. That's the standard quintessential Martin is the D28. I played a D28 in store, and it sounded god-awful. And it was yeah, but I've up. played I've played some D28s that were a dream, like sounded I, yeah, like I that dove that. you've got. Yeah, and then once uh, I played several guitars that were incredible, and then I'll tell you what really did it for me is I played this D45, uh, first D45 ever got to put my hands on. I played and I was excited, and it disappointed me very bad. And about a couple minutes later, I went and played a J200, and it didn't disappoint. And I was like, oh, man. And then I was like... No. But somebody else will have that opposite effect. You know what I mean? There, there's somebody else out there that would be impressed with the opposite one that you were. That's just how guitars work. And I just didn't think the tone. And the J200 had a tone out of this world. And uh, somebody else picked the, the D45 up, and they didn't like the tone of it either. And they said, man, that J, J200's got a killer sound. And ever since then, I've kind of been a Gibson acoustic guy is I'll never forget the first time I heard one and how good it sounded. And see, and I'm exactly the opposite. Like the only two Gibsons that I've ever played that I like the sound of. And that was a hummingbird that I've played before. And then that dove, as far as my tone, the tone yeah. I'm looking for. Well, he's that looking for that, that Shania Twain tone. So he's got to get it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Better Let's than go, Britney girls. Spears tone. <laughs> He's got to get that. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Don't get out of control on me again. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I mean, I've played, I've played a couple Gibsons I loved, I, but I've played a lot of Martins I loved. Uh, I played a D twenty eight Vintage one time. That was probably the best playing sounding Martin Dreadnought. But I'm gonna bring my OM over to the shop one day and let you spend a little time with it. And see if you think it feels like it's stiff. Okay. It's well broke in. I've had it. It's a 2006 model, and I bought it brand new. So He's never bringing it over, so therefore I'm curious. I will bring it over. That's the only one he hasn't brought. So. That's because I'm afraid it needs a fret job. <laughs> He's afraid to let me look at it. He's going to rack himself up a bill. <laughs> Oh, heck, we're going to rip it. them frets out. We're going to put new nut in. We're just going to rack up, re yeah. the ridge, whatever I can do. I'm I do played it. it the other day, and it, it, it felt good, sounded good to me, but I know it's getting some wear on it. Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, people say, what's a good point to stop at for certain things? Well, this is what I say is stop where you want to stop at. Don't stop because someone else tells you to. Stop where you want to. You make your own decision. Yeah, you, it's your bucket list. It's your bucket list. <laughs> you stop where you think you want to stop at, where you need to stop at, and go from there. My wife, if she's watching this at all today, she's probably sitting there like, shut up, Brandon. Tell him to stop. Because <laughs> I'm always, man, I've always got a wish list going all the time. Kristen, if you're watching, I'm not on your side. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've got a wish list going. Just the other night, I was sitting there. And, and I can offer I financing. I can get some stuff in, and I can finance <laughs> yeah. for them. The other night, we were down uh, down there on the couch, and she said, uh, or I said, oh, wow. I, I knew that she wouldn't be excited about it. I mean, it's the last thing that's going to excite her. I look over at her. It's just only me and her. There's nobody else for me to tell it to right then. So I look over at her and say, oh, man. Pono came out with a, a Turs guitar. They come out with a little small acoustic Turs guitar. Boy, that's cool. And she's sitting over there just not even acknowledging that I said anything because she she don't want to hear it because to her it just sounds like money flying out the window if I talk myself into it. It's, and I always it sounds try like to. George Strait says, I'm here for a good time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, always, I'm always sitting there thinking, man, this, could this be the next thing that I buy? That is wrong, man. I, 
you know, we want too much stuff. <laughs> I yeah, you just gotta, you just got to uh, just just do like they say. Come come home with a guitar when she says something. They gave it to me. How much did it cost? They it was a free store promotional item. Oh I'm yeah, I'm testing it yeah. out. They gave it to me. Oh, she really likes it when I come in and say, what'd you pay for that? Oh, I did some trading for it. She knows good and well I probably paid boot, too, you know. Oh, I traded for it. Oh, um, but man. They gave it to me. It was a store promo item. They told me that yeah. I was a lucky winner for today. It was a door prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, there's this, there's too much stuff in the in the music for, for people that love playing music and, and playing out and, and buying instruments, there's okay, too so many different departments that you can story. go down the rat hole And I'm not going to hear the person's of. name or anything like that, so therefore, therefore nobody knows about who this person is. So I'm not going to give a name or whatnot. But this guy, he lives about two hours away. Well, he come and bought a guitar I had off me. Well, he paid for it. Well, he didn't ask his wife before he bought this guitar. And... About two hours later, she's coming back in. He has a guitar case in her, and she's grabbing him by the ear into the store. Oh, goodness. Ready to take this guitar back. No returns. <laughs> well, there, there is an all sales or final policy and yeah. and stuff. And, I mean, it was, I felt he didn't end up, he ended up getting to keep it finally. But they probably, but uh, she drug him in here by the ear and was yelling at him. Like take it back, take it back, take it back. Well, my thankfully my wife would never do that. Uh, she is she's been a party to several of my guitar buying ex uh, expeditions, and she's supported me pretty good over the years. But you just gotta take it to the. She, she never likes it whenever I look at her and tell her something new in music has come out because okay. she knows that I've got wheels turning. Here's a question for you. Here's an honest to god question for you. What is what does your wife have hobby wise? Does she have any hobbies she likes to go shop or do? Uh, she's she's an artist. I mean she she has she doesn't paint it lately, but she she's a good painter and So my mother, she likes to go to Hobby Lobby and shop and read. Oh yeah, of course everybody's wife likes to do that stuff. My mom's she likes to go to the thrift stores, she likes to go to like these peddlers malls and she likes to do that kind of Kristen stuff. Kristen likes going to Amish stores. Then why why haven't you grown a beard for? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I totally caught him off guard with that one. <laughs> you never do that. I always do that. I do it on purpose too because I love seeing his facial expressions live. <laughs> if we didn't have this kind of chemistry, the show wouldn't be as good as it is. No, you're right. But. But um, speaking of, you know, where you stop in quality of wood, I had a guy one time, he bought this. Uh, actually, tell your story about the, uh, don't give the name, but tell your story about the uh, about the first act. I think that's an oh, interesting yeah. story to tell. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so this guy I know, uh, he may be watching, he'll know if I'm talking about him, but this guy I know, he, uh, and I'm talking about a guy that's, played guitar for years and had really nice guitars and knows quite a bit about guitars uh, it's i was even fooled for for a few minutes and he knew more than i did at the time but i was fooled too but anyway years ago they had bought a guitar off of this guy and it was just a it was a yari guitar that had been repaired and the guy halfway repaired it but he claimed to be a luthier and he claimed that he built guitars and maybe he did at some point in time but years later probably 10 years after the yari purchase this same guy bumped into him again and he had a guitar that he claimed he built and so he bought it and i'm not 100 percent, but i think he paid four or five hundred bucks for the guitar because it was a custom built guitar i mean and he knew the guy and it was you know kentucky built you know he thought that was cool and it, it played decent, and it did. So he brought it home, and he thought, well, I'll do a little setup work on it and jam it for a while and see how it is. But we get to looking at it, and and, and I think might be, maybe it was just one side of the bridge had this familiar look to it. And I'm like, man, I've seen that shape right there on that bridge. 
Guys, it ended up being a first act guitar that this dude had debranded, took everything off of, put his name in. I mean, he it was a total all out scam, man. It can happen. Yeah, and it was a laminate, and it was a laminate guitar. I mean, and I'll, I'll go back to stories. I'll go back how quick people rip people off is there's guys that will take squires. There's guys around here in my local area that will take squire guitars and they will make them into Fender guitars and they'll prey upon people and sell them. And it's not the fact that they're doing it to make money. They have money to begin with. They have an extensive guitar collection or something like that, but they have been caught doing it. And one of these guys, I won't give a name, fella in general, about four months back, he came in with one. And... Which, you coming in the wrong store for that. You think I ain't going to be able to tell. Yeah. And whatnot. Well, he came in. Well, one thing I noticed when I looked at it is, A, something didn't look right. And I could automatically tell. Well, the first thing I could tell was the body was the body was polyester, not polyurethane. That was the first dead giveaway. As you can tell the difference between ester and urethane. I mean, it's just a dead giveaway. So I'm looking at it going through, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And I'm looking at it. Well, the first thing I notice is the serial number don't look right. It looks decent, but it don't look right. What gave it away is the logo was in a great spot, but you could very faintly, faintly, faintly see. And he didn't like it, but I pulled out a pair of goggles that zoom, and you could faintly see the Squire logo behind it on the neck and whatnot. Wow. And I noticed that, and I called him out. I said, hey. And uh, so... I took pictures of it and whatnot, and uh, I I just wanted to, uh, you know, I, I sent it to a few buddies, reminded them not to buy it and whatnot, and... Uh, That's crazy, man. I think I went into the uh, two pawn shops locally, and I showed them. Straight and up I, scam. I just showed them. I'm like, hey, and this guy here, like, he's good money, lives in a, lives in a mansion of a house here in town. I mean, he's not like he's, but yeah, he was coming in doing that. And the reason it reminded me is I had a guy, a, a young boy coming here the other day, and he said that he almost got scammed by, by the same guy. Got to watch and your back, friend. man. And he said There's he was almost. There's people out there that yeah. are willing to prey on somebody and he said always. He, come, he said he come very close to buying this guitar. And he said that uh, Chili, Chili, some of his guts said don't. Then man, pick it out. up and play it and and. You can feel quality. I mean, that Squire neck, there's no way that Squire neck felt like a USA neck. I mean. Yeah, but this guy here was saying it was like a USA guitar. He claimed it was a genuine USA Fender. Yeah. So, people out there. It were, couldn't couldn't feel like one if it's a Squire, yeah. though. I mean, he was definitely trying to hard pass it off. At the, yeah. And whatnot. And he was, so, I mean, he was uh, he was definitely trying really, really hard. And, I mean, he refinished the neck and everything. He went too far with this, but there were just a lot of day giveaways. But people like that upset me that try that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's there's too many good, reputable places to go guitar shopping to let somebody like that get one over on you, man. Yeah. You know, just go somewhere, go somewhere where the people you know go and... You know, somebody that finds somebody that you trust and then um, deal yeah. with them. I mean, come see me. I try to take care of people. That's and right. I, and I'm fair and honest with my prices and whatnot. And, Definitely uh, not going to try to push off some kind of fake guitar off on somebody. Well, not that. I'm yeah. also honest with my prices and what I sell things for. So yeah. I try to have things at a good sellable price. You know, you know. I think the market right now, which drives me insane, is like, is like, is sell. Like, I don't understand this, and you can explain this, and this is between my little rant, Ray, for the day, is how can somebody, like, let's say somebody buys this this Indonesian guitar off of me or this nice guitar off of me for $475. That's what it's going for retail use. And then the next day you get on Marketplace, and they have the same guitar they bought off of you for, for about $400 more. How, how, how does that work? 
Like, I don't understand. Like, they buy it off of you. You had it listed on Marketplace. They come in your store. It sells for on Reverb, eBay, for about four seventy five all day long. And then the next day. Are people paying these double prices? And then the next day, it's like they get on Marketplace, and they put the same guitar, and they double the price on it. Like, absolutely. But does it sell? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would that's, think that's the thing to see. They probably don't get them sold for that, man. They probably just throw them up there and then they jam the guitar and leave that post up there. Just hoping somebody will pay them that much money. But it's insane that people think that that's like going to get them. Yeah. Or not. Like it's, it's insane. Like, I don't have the patience to sell stuff on there. That's why when I decided I wanted to part with that blue Ridge, I brought it to you because yeah. I just don't have, I don't have the patience. I and bet you a million people start dinging you whenever you put something on there. You do sometimes, and the people want to trade you, and they want to yeah. trade like like if you have a USA guitar, they want to trade you like two or three Chinese pieces for a USA piece. Yeah. yeah. Like no offense, it's it's don't make sense to me to trade Chinese for a USA. Well, if you're wanting to trade, don't. I mean, in my opinion, it's hard to trade with a music store person. You know, somebody that owns a music store because they can't put in that guitar what you need out of it. You know, they just can't. Like, like you're running a business there. You can't put, like, I'll give you an example. When I bought my first acoustic, my Martin, uh, I bought it. And then right after I bought it, I bought it at a, at a store in Somerset uh, that's not there anymore. After I bought it, they got a shipment of tailors in. And I went in, and I had I had bought the OEM maple spruce top maple back and sides OEM cutaway. When I get there later on, and they got that shipment of tailors in, they had the 600 series, the small concert, in a non cutaway slot head maple, just like my guitar, and it was beautiful maple, and it was around the same price as my guitar. I gave two grand for my guitar when I went back in there. Thirty days later to try to trade it in on that tailor. You know what the same store offered me for it? What do you think, Brandon? You're a music store guy. I gave they them two grand. Probably, uh, about trade in value. I gave them two grand for my guitar. 600. They offered me $600 trade in. People don't get it, you know. And some people really low offer. But I now I it. think that was a low ball. Yeah. I mean, I gave two grand for that guitar 30 and, days before. And I'm saying, before. yeah, low ball, understandable. I don't like that. They made a lick on it that the, when I bought it the first time, you know. Yeah, here's the deal. I say when you say low ball, I don't appreciate that. But then come in and people want you to buy, and they want you to, like, they want you to give you $20 off. You can't make money off of $20 off if you buy a guitar for $20, $20 less than retail. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I agree with that. the The guy in the store is there to make money. He's got a lot of overhead that you don't see. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so give me uh, a lot of overhead that's not seen. So, uh, tell tell him tell him tell him your thoughts on uh, on selling in a guitar. So. Well, you got to go somewhere for a sec. Just two seconds. It ain't it ain't very long. Okay, go go for it, man. But yeah, I understand when <clears throat> when you go to a store, man, the guy's got to make money. I mean, he's got all this overhead and rent and all that good stuff, insurances, but I mean, really? Really? I give 2 grand for a guitar, I play it for 30 days, don't put a single scratch on it, and they offer me 600 bucks for it. So, I know they made money the first time I bought it. And I know they're still going to make money the second time I buy it. They're making money off of what I'm trading for. I mean, I get it, but if you know, if you want a loyal customer, then don't make them feel totally beaten. You know. But um, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's just kind of like buying a new car you know you drive a new car off the lot and it loses x amount of its value and i guess that's the same way it was with that martin guitar i bought sorry the mailman pulled up and he was delivering a, a package so no yes he delivered a seymour duncan and took uh seymour duncan pearly gates for a person pearly gates cool yeah so that was kind of the thing 
you know, we're talking, I mean, you know, we talk about relationship price point and all that stuff. I get it, you know, people are trying to make money, but also stores are trying to, you know, you sell something to somebody, I try to make my prices fair. I try to, what it's selling for used is yeah. what I want to try to go for. When when you go on Reverb and you find what it's selling for used, that's what that's what I try to sell my yeah. stuff for. Well, I felt like that store where I bought that Martin, I felt like they were fair on their new price when yeah. I bought the guitar. I just felt like when I went back to trade, I felt like it was like a slap in the face to pay two grand for something and them, the same person yeah. I bought it from, to tell me 30 days later it's only worth 600 to them. And here's the thing. I get you're trying to get as much money as you can for your guitar, your money back, because you want to buy that other piece. I get that 100%. But yeah, but two thousand dollars to six hundred and thirty days. Oh yeah, days? for sure. But here's the deal: when somebody, when they say you want to sell them a guitar and they want to sell you a, a guitar they've had for maybe two or three years or it's used, and they want to sell it to you for twenty dollars off of retail, how can anybody make any money that way? But what, what my opinion is, if I gave them two grand for the guitar, my guess is they probably only had about six or eight hundred in it the first time, and I gave them two grand for it, so they doubled their money the first time probably. Yep. All right, then I came back and tried to trade it in, and they offered me $600 for it again. They were going to double their money again. Well, on top of that, the guitar I'm trading for, they only paid half a retail for it, too, probably. So they're going to double their money on it and double their money on my Martin twice. Yeah, for sure. And I just feel like they could have stepped up to the plate on the trade. When I brought it back, they could have said, you know what, we're going to sell that guitar for – Fifteen hundred bucks, we'll give you a thousand bucks for it. Trade in. Yeah, I, mean, I might have traded with them. I mean, know. something like that for sure. I try to be fair when I offer people, but then you've also got that point where you got to try to make money as well. Where, yeah, I get where, it. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: if you bring me a, let's just use a, we'll use a guitar for example. You bring me a guitar, and I go and look up the value, and it's valued at six. It's valued at six twenty five and it's sold seventy times at six twenty five on reverb or eBay. Okay? And I tell you that's how much it is. And that's how much it goes for that's the price. Let's say you're comfortable with that price. Well, if I'm if I'm gonna offer you six six seventy six twenty five is what it sells for constantly on reverb and eBay, not sold listings, not what it's currently, what it's sold listings for and the the most recent it sold for this, that's what I'm gonna go the price as. So then, if it's six twenty-five, I'm gonna offer you something like, like, like five twenty-five, five thirty. I think that's every bit fair. That leaves me in. That's a lot more fair than the deal I got. And the reason I say on this, that the reason I say is that the five twenty-five or five thirty is because a that leaves me room because just because I have it started out at let's say let's say it sells for five twenty or six twenty-five consistently, I want to price it at six fifty to start out. Just twenty five dollars more the water to let people negotiate. Okay, they'll negotiate down, and let's say it sets at that six twenty five price for a little bit. Someone may try to negotiate me down more. I've got to have a little bit of room in case I want to go down a little bit more. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think six twenty five is every bit a fair price. Oh, I I think that or, I think that scenario yeah. you just named off there. I think that was a fair scenario for a retail to an individual. I I just felt like doubling your money on oh, a yeah. two thousand dollar thing, you know, twice. Yeah, you for got, sure. Obviously, you've got a a dedicated customer, a loyal customer here. He's a, he's come back to the same store to try to trade. You know, he's trading up. Yeah, for well, sure. they thought I was trading up. Looking back on it, I don't think I was trading up. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to trade my Martin to a tailor. I'm just glad it didn't work out. I mean, that's one of the things that I honestly say or I have the confidence to say is, like, I try to be fair with all my stuff just as much as the next guy tries to be yeah. fair. But you got to understand the people's in here to make – to make a little dollar yeah. too, and if I if your amp sells for six twenty five or a guitar, and I buy it for six six hundred, that leaves me twenty five dollars profit. Somebody yeah, you're in, gonna lose money by the time you get it. Yeah, by the so, time you pay taxes, you pay all that other stuff, and by the time somebody comes in, well, hey, will you take six for it? And that's how much I paid for it. And people yeah. are like, some people are like, well, why don't you price it up? Well, why don't you buy it for six for six hundred? Do you want to have a music store to come to tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> you know. I had a guy tell me one time he was in here and he was like, why don't you buy this? Amp? He had an amplifier and he wanted to sell it to me for for four fifty, and the amp was going for four seventy five used, 
and he's like, well, you buy it at 450, you price it up at uh, at 600, somebody will buy it. Yeah, I'm not going to take a chance on somebody coming on here and paying too much for this amp. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I try to be as reasonable as possible with my prices. Sometimes I may be a little wrong or off on a few things. I'll say that. You know, we all can. I'm a human being, yeah. but I try to make it as fair as possible. And on my yeah. new stuff, they tell me what to sell it at. Yeah. I have a price where I have to price it at. People like map price. Yes, I have a price yeah. where they tell me in the catalog what I have to price it for. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh I mean, and back to the topic, you you do get what you pay for. Yeah. I mean, and I swear in sometimes even in the store that you go to, like like for instance, say you're a few dollars different than Joe Schmo up here or the big box store. And and the little guy, a lot of times the little guy with the smaller store has to be a few dollars different than the big box store. There's just no option there. And here's the reason I'll say that. But what do you get? What do you get from you, though, that you don't get from the big box store? You go to these big box stores and look at these guitars and buy it. You're you're getting somebody that can buy in thousands at a time. So, of course, they're getting a great price. They're buying a thousand at a time. But a you're getting. But they're stacked up like bricks on a shelf somewhere is what they are. Yeah. Most of their life, the instrument is. You're getting a guy here that sets it up, cleans, takes pride in what he does, and wants to make sure that you get a great instrument. That really cares about his stuff. He's not trying to bullcrap you. He's trying to sell yeah. you, and he's also trying to make a relationship with you yeah. that 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 will last. Because when when you wear something out on that guitar, and if you're a player, you're gonna wear something out on it. When you do, you know, Brandon's trying to get you to come back. You know, you're trying to get them to come back to that store for their repair work and set up yeah, work and stuff like to, that. I'm trying to make it comfortable as can be. And, and you might get lucky and go to Guitar Center and get a, or order a guitar from somewhere and get and get a good guitar from a big box store. You can get lucky, but you have to get lucky because you don't get to try them first when you order them. And then secondary, even when you go into Guitar Center, that guitar has never been set up. It just got pulled out of the box and slapped on a wall with some strings on it. They don't even change strings on them, you know. And sometimes, some guitars, I change the strings on them. I go the extra mile that other people doesn't go with my guitars. Yeah. Like I, that Gibson you've got on the wall. If the strings get rusty on it, I, you know, my advice to a guitar store owner is... Once they get raggedy, put a new set on there if you really want to sell the thing because there's nothing worse that bothers me worse than going into a guitar store and picking up guitars and the stuff on the walls got nasty, dirty strings on it because then I can't try it out. I might as well order one off the internet, you know. Yeah, for sure. You're coming to a place that has pride and what they sell, what they offer, somebody that cares about the instruments that are hanging on the wall. And it's not just another instrument. It's somebody that cares about what they do and is passionate. So did you uh, get the Gibson headstock? Did did your customer come get that? Get what? That that headstock repair that you had on the Gibson yeah, Hollow Yeah, oh, yeah, they came. You, uh, did you see the picture on Facebook or Instagram? I haven't had a chance to get on there and check it out, man. I'm going to do some catching up social media-wise. Look at it real quick. Let me know what you think, yeah, give me, if you can. Yeah, give me just a second. I'll check it out. But is a big thing that I strive on. What's hey, that? thanks. Colby said that personal touch you're all talking about means a lot. Thanks. Here's one thing that I believe in, and I worked at Walmart for three years. This is something I was always taught. My father sells cars, and he taught me the same belief is you take care of your people, you're honest with them, and you'll, you'll sell them cars for the rest of their life. And if you're good to them and you care and you actually mean it, you're not some snake. My father sells cars, but he also does it honestly, and he don't lie about what he sells and he takes care of people. Yeah, that looks great, man. And that's one of the things that I really, really, really like is I try to treat everybody with the same respect. If you treat me with respect, I'll treat you. And I try to care about everybody that comes through here, comes through my doors, because it takes somebody could be having the worst day possible, and it takes one time for them to walk through the door, and for me maybe to have a smile on my face and to make a difference in their day. It really does. Yeah, man. We don't know what people are going through. I don't know what people are going through, but all I know is if I could be the one time in their day that they smile, I want to be that way. If well, I, and you you've only got one chance. 
at that first impression as a business owner. When somebody walks through that door, man, that first day is everything. Even kids. I, mean, I see a kid walk through the door. They're just as important to me as an adult because their first interaction with a music store is going to be something they're going to remember for the rest of their life. And that's yeah. something because I that especially if they me. end up going forward yeah. with music, and that's that's home to me. Is even my students I teach with, I want to be an avenue, not just their guitar teacher, but I want to be an avenue where they can sit at and say, hey, you know, even my older ones, you know, tell me about their week. I could be an avenue to be a friend to them and to be to be with them, and that that's kind of the thing is I believe in customer service. I believe in offering, having a smiling face and to be good to people, and you'll get a lot better attitude than come in as Mr. Know-it-all, Mr. Well, you got to use my services. No, I want you to have a great experience, but I want to I want to have that friendly one-on-one interaction. So I have yeah. customers when they come back and pick up their guitar, they jam with their guitar, and I jam with my guitar, and we have that kind of one-on-one interaction, and we kind of bond together over that guitar. It's like, okay, it's that cool one-on-one interaction that both of us are going and doing. And I think it's really, really cool. So, I mean. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, you know, we we haven't had a fret job episode. Uh, By the way, sorry we missed a week. uh, But we haven't talked since we attempted to have our guitar jam off, but it ended up turning in, or it ended up, playoff ended up turning into a jam session uh so we had a lot of people show up just a lot of people didn't want to participate they wanted to watch yeah and but man i had fun that night i really did uh they had brandon on an acoustic uh had Jaden sitting there on a custom shop strat that was beautiful i think it was like sienna sunburst or it's beautiful man but he was playing through that head rush had uh a guy, and I don't know everybody's name, had a guy on a Les Paul, a vintage Les Paul His playing. Name Aaron. All right, Aaron on the Les Paul. This is a nice guitar. Had another guy on a Epi Les Paul. Uh, and then had, what, Bucky on the, on the acoustic? Yeah, two acoustics. We just had a really great time with everything. Two acoustics, two electrics. It was yeah, cool, man. Sure. And let me tell you. Down deep in my heart, each and every one of you have a special place in there. All my customers, even if you watch from afar, you have a special place in my heart. Whether you watch on the YouTube channel, whether you watch on here, each and every one of you have a special place in the Frizzell family. And I appreciate everybody that likes my post, that shares it, everybody that interacts with the YouTube, that keeps up. All And what I like is you all that check on me. Like I have customers that, hey, you know, when when they see things or they check, they message me. Hey, man, I know you're not at the store. I just wanted to, you know, say how are you? My guitar still plays great. I'm very very happy with it. I just want to let you know, make sure you're okay. How are you? Or yeah. I see a customer, and it's not just about the store. It's about hey, man, you doing okay? You know, talking. It's about building that relationship with people. And I like anything new in the store right now. Um, let's see. We got that banjo. So the Gibson the the uh, dove is gone, but we got a what? Yeah, we got a vintage banjo. The dove's gone. Yes, the dove is G O N E out the door. Vamoose. Somebody bought it. Somebody got the dove. Wow. And then we've got that Les Paul standard for a thousand bucks with the hot rails, and then we've also got uh, we've also got a new Squire P bass. So if you want a bass. There you go. Les Paul standard with hot rails. No, I oh, Fender. I Fender Stratocaster standard. Yeah, I was fixing to say I got to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we have a lot of interesting stuff coming up, and uh, this week should be a fun one. I'm excited for the videos that are coming out this week. So make sure you share the videos with your friends or family. Tell everybody to support the YouTube channel, the business, the fret job. We love when you interact and comment with us. We love when you watch, you tell us. Even if you're watching on YouTube, comment. Tell us what you think. We want to hear from you. We want to see your interactions, Jonathan's interaction. We want to be we want to be your your neighborhood, your neighborhood guitar place, your place to come wind down, relax, and to watch. All and uh, all you all have a special place right here. And I'm sure with Jonathan too. 
Absolutely, man. <clears throat> and uh, we are proud of uh, 10 episodes here, and we hope to look for another 10 more and another 10 more after that. You know? well, yeah, we're going to keep on rolling, man. We're going to keep, keep on, on rolling. Yeah, and you guys can help us grow and make this. Oh, Colby, yeah. Uh, th- uh, yeah. Thanks, Jonathan, for correcting me. Colby said he was about to get in his car and come here for that last fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking, man. I, I, I want to see that. Yeah, so uh, so your antiquity came in, Colby. Or not antiquity, your... Uh, your uh, Pearly Gates is sitting on my bench over there. So, hey, thanks, Dave. Uh, congratulations. He put congrats on 10. Yeah, we really worked hard to make this. And all y'all, if you ever need anybody for music producing or anything like that, or you need somebody to help with that, Dave Strumfield is probably one of the best. Strumfeld is probably one of the best in the industry. Uh, probably one of the best in the industry, in my opinion, for music producing, recording, for songwriting, all that stuff. He is just an incredibly talented guy. So if you ever need anything, make sure you hit up Dave because he will take care of you for an affordable. He he is he is great on everything he does. He doesn't break the bank, but he also he also you get great quality. So if you ever need any music produced or anything, hit Dave up. Dave is probably, in my opinion, one of the best there probably is. So so I mean, if I was going to record another song tomorrow, Dave would be the first man I called because. He honestly, he honestly has Nashville talent, and I don't understand why this dude ain't in some studio at RCA or some big <laughs> studio working because he has talent more than anybody I've seen in Nashville. So cool. y'all, y'all hit him up, and uh, if you ever need anything, Dave Strumfield is one of the uh, heck of a music guy, two degrees in music, and uh, he is, he is truly. He is truly an honor to have him here on the Fred job watching and maybe here soon we can bring him on as a special guest if he wants to. Cool. To talk about him. So uh, Sounds good, man. Yeah. So we got a lot of things to come. I know we're a few minutes early. And uh heck yeah, Dave. So Dave's Dave's going to be coming to Nashville. So that's pretty cool. Dave is a incredible fella and uh I am uh, super proud. He worked on two songs for me. But we're going to have a great week. I know we carried on a little bit longer, but we've had a lot of end, ending interactions here and whatnot and clearing up this episode. But, yeah, so make sure you all check out everything. Check out the videos on YouTube and whatnot. Come in and get a brand-new guitar. Come in for whatever your needs are. Come take care of it. We've got the Mesa Boogie Rex still for 1600 So we've got a lot of great stuff. So make sure you're tuning in, checking us out with all this stuff. If you ever need a house, Jonathan Recorder at Lincoln Realty. My opinion, he's the best real estate agent in four counties. Give me a call. What's that number? 606-669-8225. And uh, he'll take care of you. So local. I'll help you find one. We'll help you get one sold. Full service, man. Yeah, so anything you need. And uh, so uh, sell and let Jonathan do that for you. And that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm Brandon. This is the Fred Job. Y'all have a good week. I'm Jonathan.